Hey, it's Meat Sandwich from the Boris and Robin Show. It is time to take a look at the box office this weekend with Meat at the Movies. So there's a few movies opening up this weekend, and I guess the big one would be Fifty Shades Freed, the third and final film in the series that began with Fifty Shades of Grey and continued with Fifty Shades Darker. Dakota Johnson and Jamie Dornan are back as Anastasia Steele and Christian Grey, and if you like those first two movies, odds are you'll probably like this one. For everyone else, you probably won't. Uh, this movie currently holds a 7% on Rotten Tomatoes, and while some of the comedy is actually intentional this time around, uh, reviews indicate that it's still largely a swing and a miss. Also, I've never seen these movies, but the trailer for this has been playing a lot, and it involves things like car chases and guns and thriller elements, which just seems kind of weird and out of place, uh, so we'll see what happens. But uh, now if you've got kids and need to drop them off somewhere while you go see Fifty Shades, uh, you can put them in the theater next door for a showing of Peter Rabbit. Uh, this is the new movie based on the iconic children's character, which takes the padding or Alvin and the Chipmunks approach of having a CGI animal character in a live action setting. Uh, James Corden provides the voice of Peter Rabbit and the cast also includes Rose Byrne, Donald Gleason, Sam Neill, Daisy Ridley, and Margot Robbie. It's getting okay reviews but seems like it's being, it's trying very hard to make a very wholesome character into something much edgier. Uh, the poster for this movie features the tagline, Rascal, Rebel, Rabbit, because Rascal and Rebel are the first words I think of when I think of Peter Rabbit. Uh, also opening this weekend is the new movie directed by Clint Eastwood, and it's called The 1517 to Paris. Uh, the movie is based on a true story of three American friends traveling through Europe who prevent a terrorist attack. Uh, the twist is that instead of hiring actors to play these guys, Eastwood got these guys to play themselves in the movie. On the one hand, that could lend authenticity to a remarkable true story. On the other hand, this is a movie, and these guys aren't actors. Uh, this has been done before with movies like Act of Valor, which starred real U.S. Marines rather than actors, and uh, it's an interesting idea that basically never works. Uh, the 1517 to Paris is getting shredded by critics, many saying that the movie would not be good even if the guys did know how to act, uh, and their non-acting background paired with Eastwood's directorial style, uh, which he generally does like one or two takes before moving on to the next scene, uh, sound like they really heard a movie that had the potential to be really interesting. Uh, even weirder is that there are actual actors playing other characters in this movie, Movie, like Judy Greer, Jenna Fisher, and Tony Hale, so the difference in acting is all the more apparent. I love Eastwood, but this sounds like a misfire. So, weirdly, your best option this weekend might be Peter Rabbit, uh, or you can stay at home and watch that surprise Cloverfield movie that hit Netflix after the Super Bowl. It's trash, but it's kind of goofy fun trash. Uh, I'm Meat Sandwich, and until next time, we'll meet at the movies.